With Cuba poised on the brink of great changes, some of which are already underway, the time to visit this island nation is right now. One thing is certain, in just a few years, Cuba will be a very different place. So come with us, meet the people of Cuba. Discover this beautiful island that lies just 90 miles off the coast of Florida, yet in many respects is so far away. If Havana is where change is most visible, Cuba's colorful past is vividly on display in Cienfuegos, one of the island's oldest and richest colonial cities. Here, graceful French-style mansions and stately Spanish churches line the streets and plazas of the historic center. I was impressed with how much culture there was and has been over several centuries. It's quite interesting to hear something about the history, too, and the, the changing cultures that have affected the people here. Another graceful colonial city is Trinidad, which prospered when sugar was king. Today, Trinidad is a center for many of Cuba's most talented artists and craftspeople. Musicians from Trinidad's thriving music scene often congregate at the outdoor performance space known as La Casa de la Musica. You'll hear great music during a daytime practice session here. The source of Trinidad's wealth can be found in the nearby village of the sugar mills. Today, this area is a bucolic living museum. Yet for more than a hundred years, it was an industrial powerhouse with slaves laboring on vast plantations to feed the mills that processed raw cane into sugar. Many Americans still remember the Bay of Pigs, where revolutionary forces under Fidel Castro repelled an invasion secretly backed by the CIA. To proud Cubans, the Bay of Pigs memorial is a reminder of their determination to defend their newly won freedom. Being from the United States, I have always wondered why we had an embargo on Cuba for so long. You know, you get here, the place is beautiful, the people are friendly. Uh, I'm happy that I'm here. I, I wish I could have come a lot sooner. If there is one place that captures Cuba past, present, and future, it's Havana. Cuba's capital is romantic and timeless, yet pulsing with vigor as new businesses open and colonial facades get a fresh coat of paint. But the 16th century buildings and vintage American cars are just the backdrop. Havana's real treasure is its people. Cast aside your preconceptions and let yourself be embraced by the open-hearted spirit of habaneros, young and old. We are in Havana, the heart of Cuba. We are at El Morro Castle, that's one symbol of Havana, because it's the largest fortress of the Americas. And we are exactly in a place that you can see the whole Havana. It has a breathtaking view of the old Havana and the new Havana. And uh, it's exciting to be able to show how Cuba has been like uh, suspended in time for 50 years. With Americans returning after nearly 60 years, we cannot forget one American who is linked forever with Cuba. Ernest Hemingway. In 1940, he purchased a house on the outskirts of Havana known as Finca Vejia, or Lookout House. It was his refuge, a place to live simply and write. It was at Finca Vejia that he worked on such classics as For Whom the Bell Tolls and The Old Man in the Sea. I remember in high school reading one of his famous books, Old Man in the Sea. So I was, I'm really happy to have seen where Hemingway lived for 21 years. After the Nobel Prize winning author's death in 1961, Finca de Villa fell into disrepair, but has since been restored and opened as a museum. Today, it looks just as it did when Hemingway was in residence. Boy, you know, Vantage has done a job to put this together. 
Uh, I'm so impressed. I'm so glad we did this. Seeing different things, meeting different people, it, it is truly an adventure. Join us. Come discover the many faces of Cuba. But don't wait too long. With historic changes underway, it's one of our fastest-selling destinations.